Hello friends, as we are going to discuss about the unit photochemistry, we have covered the first part of photochemistry and now we are going to cover the which is about the solar cell. Here in this video, we are going to cover the two parts that are prospects of solar energy conversion and storage. That is how solar energy is converted and how it can be stored as we know about the solar cell or photosynthesis where in case of photosynthesis light energy is converted into the chemical energy and that chemical energy on combustion gets released for example in case of photosynthesis carbohydrates are being formed and those carbohydrates are being used by us as the energy poster and second is photoelectron chemistry where we will be covering the two parts that are the photo decomposition of NOCL and another one will be the photolysis of water where the photolysis of water can be done in electrically as well as using the semiconductors and third part is photovoltaic and photocarbonic cells and organic solar cells now in case of photo solar energy conversion in case of solar energy conversion it can be converted into two forms that is converting light energy into thermal energy and that will uh, that will use the photochemical device and we will cover the photoelectron chemistry part and another one will be the converting of solar conversion of solar energy that is light energy into the electrical energy and which will be covering the photovoltaic and photocarbonic cells and the organic solar cells now as we know in case of photosynthesis, leaves contain the chloroplast. If this is, uh, let me take the first pointer. If we take a cross section of the leaf, it will be like this. It will be containing chloroplast, nucleus, vacuole, cell wall, etc. Things. And if you go on watching the cell wall, in the, if you, you go on watching the chloroplast, then the chloroplast will have such type of structure where it is having the outer membrane, inner membrane, then these are the granum parts which are covered, which are which are being made up of the thylakoid, thylakoids, and this is the stroma part. Now, in case of CO2 fixation reaction, here this is the chloroplast, outer membrane, inner membrane, this is the stroma part, then this is the granum part. Now, what happens? CO2 when enters the chloroplast at that time. It combines with the ADP and inorganic phosphate and it will go through this part and then it will form the ATP, NADH and carbohydrates entity. Now main reaction which is occurring is here. And these are the thylakoid parts. This thylakoid is nothing but a membrane which is having such type of structure. It is comprising of photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Now this photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. The above part, we may say here the cathodic reactions are occurring, which is the reduction reaction, while this is the anodic reactions are occurring, which is the oxidation reaction. As you can see, water is get, getting dissociated into twice H plus ions and oxygen. So it is the oxidation reaction. And inside the membrane, sorry, outside the membrane, that is in the stroma part, the ADP combining with inorganic phosphate and forming the ATP. Also, NADP combining with twice H plus and it is forming the NADPH as we have seen the CO2 fixation. So, the same reactions are occurring here. It means the membrane is covering, it's being, we will see that membrane is being working as an electrode or let's that is the photosynthetic membrane. Here this membrane is called as a thylakoid membrane and that thylakoid membrane it resembles that of a semiconductor electrode since it can separate the positive entity as well as the negative charge carriers as you have you can see from this. Now this concept of that photosynthetic membrane is being working as a semiconductor electrode uh, separating the positive and negative charge carriers it's explained by the Hall effect. And what is that Hall effect? It is a measurement of intact chloroplast in presence of the magnetic field. Now, there in that experiment, 
who observed that the two charge carriers are produced. One is the positive charge carrier, another is the negative charge carrier, and they have different lifetimes and different mobilities. The capacity of such membranes to convert solar energy into chemical energy is an endoenergetic reaction, and in that case, the energy change will be positive as it is an endoenergetic reaction, and it has stimulated the interest in development of such model systems for storage and utilization of solar energy by direct conversion of light quanta. It means as we are being converting the light energy into chemical energy, that chemical energy can be used for various purposes. So in photosynthesis, solar energy is stored in two products. That one first is carbohydrate and another one is the oxygen. The carbohydrate can be burned and energy can be released in air. The energy storing photoreactions occur with positive free energy change and hence they are thermodynamically unstable. As we all know, the energy change should be negative for a spontaneous reactions. As the energy storing photoreactions will be thermodynamically unstable. So if we prevent the back reaction from occurring, then the energy remains stored in photo products that is as you can see the reactions which I have already shown you in the earlier figure, we will see that again. And for the examples of such reactions is photo rearrangement reaction, where which are governed by the Woodward Hoffman rule. These rules provide the stereochemical course of photochemical rearrangement and which is based on the symmetry properties of highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the molecule. A reaction which is photochemically allowed may be thermally forbidden. Also, the principle can be reversed that is if the reaction is thermally allowed, it can be photochemically forbidden. <coughs> For example, are electrocyclic rearrangement reactions. So, you can see here, firstly, the cyclization of 1,3-butadiene into cyclobutene. Then this is the cycloaddition reaction. This is the sigma trophic effect. And these are the isomerization of norbordine to quadricycline con conversion. Now, a reaction, that is the last reaction which we have seen there, that is the conversion of norbordine to quadricycline. It is just an isomerization reaction, but this reaction can store the energy of 260 calorie per gram of material and have shown some promise in balanced isomerization. So, as it is storing this much amount of energy, but there is this advantage is that it does not absorb in the visible region and therefore it cannot utilize the sunlight properly. There will be sunlight efficiency is very poor. So, in order to increase this efficiency, the solution is that we should attach a for chromophoric groups to this group or by the use of suitable sensitizers. If you go on increasing, if you go on joining the chromophoric, chromophoric groups here, then at that time, there will be the better utilization of solar energy. So, the photo decomposition reaction in which now we are going to cover our next part. 
the photo decomposition reactions in which photo products they can store also their energy as the fuels and they have been found to be more efficient systems the photo products that are as a carbohydrate it is a photo product or any reaction which is occurring in presence of light and forming some product that product will be called as the photo product and that photo products can be mixed at a later time and it will regain the stored energy in the, as in the combustion of the carbohydrates if the gases if the products are gases then problem will be very simplified but there will be some loss of energy during the course of entropy increase and if we are getting the stable product it can be stored and they can be allowed to recombine releasing the thermal as well as the electrical energy now photoelectron chemistry which is the second part in photoelectron chemistry we will be covering the two parts that is the photo decomposition of nacl and another will be photolysis of water now photo decomposition of nocl it occurs with high quantum yield in the process it takes place by two steps and the storing positive energy is about plus 40 kJ so here nocl is combining on nocl on absorption of quantum radiations it will form no plus cl radical that cl radical again combined with the nocl and it will form no plus cl2 and the free energy change associated with this is about plus 40 kJ and the no and cl2 the products which are being liberated they can be recombined in a fuel cell and form the nocl and again the chain reaction can be continued means as the reaction will be formed at that time the delta i changes which are associated with this reaction is about 0.21 volt so this can be react this reaction can be used in fuel cells nocl can be a photo product and another is photolysis of water where water as we all know the decomposition of water to h2 and o2 is a highly endothermic process that is water will dissolve into h2 and half o2 where the delta changes associated with it is plus 337 237 kJ while at the enthalpy changes are about 295 kJ as we all know hydrogen is a non polluting fuel it burns in air and produce water again releasing large amount of heat how alternatively h2 and o2 may be made to recombine in a fuel cell generating the electrical energy that is water can be burnt in air it will release h2 and o2 and then h2 and o2 this can be utilized in a fuel cell which will generate the electrical energy the thermodynamic breakdown of energy for fuel for water is about 1.30 23 electron volt the thermodynamic breakdown energy the energy which is needed for the breakdown of water is about 1.23 electron volt and the electrochemical decomposition of water requires two electrons in consecutive steps as we all know the hydronium ion that is when we take the two water molecules it will form the h3o plus plus oh minus and that h3o plus on combining with electrons it will form the H2 and water. So at cathode reduction is occurring. While at anode, the two OH minus ions will form the O2 plus twice OH minus OH plus. Sorry, it will form twice twice OH minus. It will form O2 plus twice H plus plus four electrons. So it requires two quantum photochemical. It is a two quantum photochemical process because it is requiring the two quantum. Two electrons, and with the input of at least two thirty-seven kilojoule energy, and one point twenty-three electron volt for one electron. So for two electron, it will be two point forty-six electron volt per molecule. So for a one quantum process, light wavelength shorter than five hundred nanometer can only be effective. Again, it will be solar poor utilization of solar spectrum. So for that. the idea is using the semiconductor electrode with suitable band gaps 
Now what will happen here? In case of semiconductor semiconductor electrode with suitable band gaps, it will act as a quantum collector. And on irradiation with energy which is greater than the band gap energy, that is titanium oxide is having some band gap, and the irradiation energy should be more than that. Then it will cause the photo electrochemical oxidation or reduction of the species in solution. As you can see, this is the semiconductor electrode that is titanium dioxide semiconductor electrode. On the irradiation of radiation, what will happen? Here the reaction will be H2O will get dissociated into OH minus and H plus and there will occur the liberation of electron and oxygen will be liberated like this. Now this H electrons, generated electrons and H plus here that can combine in case of the platinized counter electrode where the twice H plus ions and electron will combine generating the H2 and this H2 as well as O2 can be generated, can be combined and can be gathered. You can say it can be stored and they can be utilized in the solar cell or the fuel cells. So the same thing are discussed here that is on photolysis of water with 0.1 normal NaOH solution using n-type titanium dioxide semiconductor electrode as the anode and platinized platinum as the cathode. Oxygen is evolved at the titanium dioxide surface while that of and dark H2 is evolved. As you can see here for irradiation is needed, it will the semiconductor electrode will be in the presence of light and it will be there is no light. So this process will be occurring in dark where the generation of H2 is occurring. It is necessary to exclude the atmospheric oxygen, otherwise, it will be reduced preferentially at the cathode. So the phenomena was observed by Fujishima and Honda and they have given some steps for pho photoelectrolysis of water at the two electrodes. They have written, they have given the steps which are initially the semiconductor electrode which is titanium dioxide. It is on combination of the photons, it is forming the two electrons as well as two holes. The in first step, two holes are combining with water at the titanium ox hydroxide surface and they are forming the oxygen as well as twice H plus ions and the generation of oxygen is occurring at the titanium oxide electrode. So it will be the oxidation process and in the next step, the two electrons which are generated here and twice H plus, these two species are going to combine at the platinum electrode and forming the H2. Those hydrogen and oxygen, those are generated hydrogen and oxygen which are generated it can be utilized in the fuel cells. So this is all about the topic. You can write your answer in your own way that are, that are only the contents which are given. So last one is the quote from, quote from Brahma Kumari. Never hold your head very high with pride or ego. Remember even the winner of a gold medal gets the medal only when he puts his head down. Always be humble and always be careful. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you.